Hi everybody. We've gotten a lot of requests to do a video, kind of a tour of the van, uh, showing some of the modifications that we've made that have allowed us to go on such a long extended road trip and use it as a camper. So I'm going to do a once over of some of these things and uh, if you have other questions on some of them, I'll dive a little deeper into those aspects. But let's get started. So right off the bat, I want to give a big shout out to Bruce Parks. He's got a great collection of videos on YouTube. He's turned his Toyota Sienna into a camper and he's got lots of great ideas. He's figured out solutions to a lot of the problems and uh, it's well, well worth watching them in my case over and over and over again. Again, I borrowed very heavily from his designs. So check them out on the top. You can see I've got a solar panel that gives us 100 watts, supplies it into a what's called a solar battery or a solar generator. And also here, this is my fuel tank for my furnace. That holds about two gallons of diesel and is really enough for quite a few nights of cold weather. That's kind of the best location I could find to put it. I didn't want to have diesel inside the vehicle while we were traveling uh, be just because of the smell and, and added space it would take. So that seems to have worked out really well. And I'll get into that a little bit more later. I've talked a bit earlier in some of these other videos about these side rain guards here, these uh, rain shields. That allows us to open the window a couple of inches and still get airflow through at night. These side windows have screens on them and those have been in some other videos as well. So uh, check those if you want some more information on that. They work really well. I've got them on the front and on the sliding rear window. And uh, I just couldn't be more pleased with them. I've also talked earlier about tires and the lift kit that I put on. That gives us about a total of 10 inches of clearance from the road. That's just been fantastic. Gives us clearance for rocks and other obstructions in the road, high centers on, on back roads and so on. So uh, those that has just worked great. It wasn't easy to put in, but check that other video. I've got detailing that a little bit too. The only thing really visible on the front is the uh, bug shield wind guard here. That's helped quite a bit to keep the bugs off of the windshield. Typically we have a box on the bottom that you've seen in some of the other videos that attaches to the trailer hitch that I've installed there. When the box is not on, the trailer hitch is no lower than any other portion of the underneath part of the vehicle. And it doesn't extend out any farther either. So it's not like I'm, you know, hitting my legs on it or anything while it's not in use. Inside, this is our bed platform. Got some slide bolts here that hold it in place. Lifts up, and I've got some other sliders here that lock it in place against the edge of these cutouts. We have a table mounted underneath. I'll show you how that works. Bracket on the table slides into the bracket on the edge here locks into place and underneath I got a couple of spots where we can mount our our walking sticks there lower them to the right height and act as legs that gives us some place to cook set things so on works really well we also can put this inside against the cabinet before using it in inside I'll show you how that works too here's where our table fastens on the inside And again, we can just connect our walking sticks here for the legs or even use the tripod. Works just fine. Keeps things steady. Back here is where we keep our refrigerator. This, the brand of this one is called Bodega, but it is the same model and manufacturer as the Iceco brands that you find on Amazon and elsewhere. Works really well. We haven't had any problem with it at all. 
The refrigerator is our largest use of electricity, so when you're designing your solar panels and your battery system, keep that in mind. Think of that you may have overcast days and you may not be driving for several days in a row, so you'll need to have the capacity to power your refrigerator, plus a few lights and so on, maybe even charging cameras. So uh, keep those items in mind. It fits right back in here and actually the height of the, the bed platform and the size of the refrigerator were a couple of the factors in determining where to make that final finished height for the bed platform. Also back here is our furnace. That's just a protective cover on it and I'll show that to you here in a second. So with the refrigerator removed, we've got this protective cover over top of the furnace, but it's basically a diesel parking heater. You can find these on Amazon. This is the smallest model they make. Air comes in on this side, fuel comes in underneath, combustion air and uh, the venting goes down, and this is our supply duct. I just put a couple of wool socks over the top of it to give it a little added insulation and to keep things around it from getting too hot. It works like a dream. It's not very noisy and it warms the inside of the van up from 32 degrees up to 70 within just a few minutes uh, and then it'll keep it that way all night long using maybe just a cup or two of diesel fuel. Underneath you can see right here is the exhaust for that furnace. There's an underneath view there showing that exhaust run. The fuel from that diesel tank on the roof comes on down through this hose here. I had to drill an opening here, one of the only couple of holes that I drilled in the entire van. Fuel goes in here, it goes inside of the hollow fender cavity, and I can access it from underneath where there's a fuel filter for the furnace. Also got some reading lights here. These at night, one on each side. Those come in handy too. I'll show you a little bit inside of here. This is the access compartment for the jack. And this is also where the pump for the furnace is. It's got some uh, sound shielding around it. And I also use this access way to run some of the wiring. I beefed up the size of the wire for this lighter outlet. I wanted to be able to rely on the vehicle outlet to power the refrigerator. I removed the original, I believe it was 18 gauge wiring to that outlet and replaced it with 10 gauge. So we've got a good amount of power at that outlet. These upper compartments on each side is where we store our clothes. We use uh, packing cubes, so everything gets put in here and there's actually a lot of room, much more than it appears. So we have them on each side. We've got little cubbies on each side too. This is dealing mostly with the air system, the air, air intake system. Got them on this side too. And then this cubby, we store some of our cables and so on for our phones. One of the other things that I did that was really a game changer was removing the center console between the two seats. That allows us to go back and forth between the front and the back without going outside of the vehicle. That wasn't too terribly difficult. There was some wiring involved and so on, and it left a, a kind of a gap here on this part of the console. So I just fashioned a piece of wood that goes in there and fastened it in place with Velcro tabs. That seems to work just fine. We've got lights on the sides lights on the top and over here we have lights on this header this is where we hang a lot of our clothes and stuff at night especially it's nice to have things organized at night keep them out of the way and you can see as we push the seats up how much extra room there is in front that gives us more than an extra foot my wife made the curtains gives us a little privacy from the front and the back seals things off nice and also keeps it a little bit warmer in the back if it's a cool night. This is the inside of that. On the other side of the curtains, this is 
how they cook them across. This is just an old uh, tent a rod for a tent that we found at the used building some material store. A couple of the other things that we did, we added a Garmin GPS, which also has a backup camera. Once that travel box is mounted to the rear trailer hitch, we lose the built-in backup camera, and it's really nice to be able to have that. That operates uh, really well, and the GPS has been a lifesaver as well. We also have our dash cam that's tied in to our rear dash cam as well. So we have constant video while we're going down the road, front and back. And I have to download that every night. So we just make a note of the times that we see interesting things on the road, scenery, animals, and whatever. And then I can zip to those spots and download those particular videos for that section of the trip. Couple of other things, we have lights over here above the sink. 120 volt outlet. This is from our cabin battery. This is if we're plugged into shore power. We also have uh, a couple of USB charging stations here, as well as a voltmeter. And this is our ventilation system for the fans. Goes on there. And I can adjust the, the speed of the fan. It comes out in a duct underneath. And I'll show you how that works on the outside too. So this is the back side of the cabinet. There's our water container. The gray water comes straight out of the sink. That's where we have some other things stored including a couple of thermoses. Faucet for the sink and the tubing and so on here too. This is our air plenum. Now when the window is open just a few inches down to this level, we pull in air from the outside, even if it's raining, comes in, is drawn in through this small duct here and discharged through that uh, duct register. Provides a nice flow of air throughout, keeps the van from getting too steamed up and too muggy at night. As you see, it is hardly noticeable when the window is down. And we can actually even raise that up another couple of inches if it's really raining hard without worrying about anything getting wet. Pulls air in right through there and distributes it out through the rest of the van without keeping things from getting too muggy or, or humid inside at night. So on the floor, we put down these anti, they're just fatigue mats for standing on. You find these at Costco. They're pretty thick and they give a lot of cushion support. Just have three of them down there and we cut them to fit in a couple of spots. We remove the, the rear second row seats and the, the trolley system that they, that they ride on. We left the tracks in place because they don't rise up that, that far. Removing that wasn't terribly difficult. You can find a couple of spots on YouTube that shows you how it's done. So, uh, but it gave us quite a bit of extra room. We left the carpet in place just so that it could provide a little bit more insulation and some soundproofing. And that track also provided a spot for to connect a few things down like like the uh, cabinet. Everything done in the van is connected to, to existing hard points in the vehicle, clamped on and so on with only a couple of spots did I drill holes. One was for the fuel intake on the furnace here, right through the side. And the other was in the floor underneath the furnace for the vent and combustion air of the furnace itself. On the inside, I've got our cabinet with a sink, a little bit of countertop space here, storage underneath, great place in paper towels and so on, maybe a fire extinguisher, good idea to have. And here's how the bed works on the front. 
Got slide bolts on the sides. Lock everything in place while we're moving. Bed pulls out. Legs go down. And then we throw our mattress on the top. Works pretty good. There's plenty of room for two people. I'm six foot one and uh, it works just fine for me. Also, when the bed is pulled out and we have the furnace on, I can extend the duct out past the end of the bed so that we're heating more of the cabin area and not just underneath the bed. On top, we've got the window covers stashed out of the way, just held up by these elastic cords. And these are just supports made out of uh, some stock uh, steel that was able to get at a used building supply store. This portion of the bed also lifts up to be able to access things that are stored underneath if we want. And this is our battery, solar battery system, as well as a backup battery that I was able to connect to it. The brand is Energy, and this particular model is the Apex. Uh, I chose this for a couple of reasons. One is that it has two 12 volt, 15 amp outlets on it. One is dedicated strictly for the furnace, which has a glow plug that takes about 10 to 12 amps for just a couple of minutes on startup. The other one is for everything else, the lights, the chargers, and the other components in, in, the, in the van. Over here I've got, I've got it wired so I can get my power from solar, from the vehicle, or from shore power. Got lights. Another lighter outlet here. And those are my furnace controls. I don't know that I would purchase this particular unit again. It has some problems uh, right off the bat. A switch broke. Oh, there's a few other things. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing what we've done with our van. It's always a work in progress. We've decided a few little things that we wanted to do after our trip. So I think that's the way it always is. There's always going to be improvements and modifications. Uh, if you have questions about anything, feel free to drop a, a question in the comment line and I'll try to answer them as quick as I can. It's time for another trip.